Hi you guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline and if you're looking to satisfy all of your DIY needs then you have come to the right place. But first before we start make sure you guys subscribe and also ring that little bell that's right over here that way you guys don't miss not one of my DIY projects. So for today's video we're going to be doing a DIY zombie tutorial for shoes. And this is what they look like. Ooh. These are actually my husband's. So if you guys are wondering why they're so big, no, they're not mine. <laughs> I do have big feet though, but it's all good. Um, I made these last year. We were all zombies for Halloween and they were absolutely amazing. We had got so many compliments from everybody. We were like, hello, what about our costumes and our makeup? They were like, no, sister, we just want to look at the shoes. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and the best part about it is I'm actually doing a giveaway. So as long as you guys subscribe and leave a comment with your shoe size, then one of you lucky winners are going to get one of these custom made zombie shoes. And I will be announcing the winner on the 30, 30th of this month. So make sure you guys keep watching my videos and make sure you guys keep commenting because you never know, it could be you. So boils and ghouls, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Okay, you guys. So for this DIY project, you will be needing a pair of canvas shoes, acrylic paints, paint brushes of various sizes, a cup with water, paper towels, a paint disc or a plate, and last but not least, you will be needing a fabric pencil or a regular pencil will be just fine. Okay, so first you wanna start off with putting your paper towels down to protect your work area. And then I'm using my husband's old pair of shoes as a reference. So I really didn't need for a sketch or a picture. So you wanna start sketching it out. Um, and I'm sorry you guys, I couldn't find my fabric pencil. I'm currently under um, like redoing my office. So I have things all over the place and I couldn't find it. But a pencil, regular pencil is just fine. It's just that you can't really see it on my monitor. But they're there, the lines are there. You'll be able to see them as you're sketching it out. Also, don't be afraid of making any mistakes. Um, once you start painting, you'll notice that the paint covers it right up. So if you do feel like you've done something, a slight little mistake, don't beat yourself up for it. Um, you can easily fix that. Now you'll see me sometimes moving the shoe around and that is only because it helps looking at it from a different point of view because sometimes the way I have it um, looks okay but then as soon as I turn it around you'll find that you're like oops I think I might have done that a little bit too high or it looks kind of crooked but like I said any mistakes can be fixed by the paint and right here I am measuring both shoes just to make sure they look the same now let's get into our supplies so make sure you have a variety pack of brushes. There's my larger brushes, my smaller brushes, my paint disc, but you can also use a plate. Your paper towels to wipe off your brushes, your water, and of course your acrylic paints. Now I don't have a specific brand. They all tend to work the same. So just as long as whatever colors you choose 
you'll be fine. So you will start off with your base color. I decided to do the green and I'm just picking out what brush. You'll know what brush works best for you if you feel like you like working with a bigger brush, then go with the bigger brush. I like more of the medium brush. I feel like it gives me a little bit more control. Now let's get to painting. I get so excited if you guys only knew how my hands are getting sweaty right now <laughs> by just watching this. Always remember too, um, if you feel like you maybe came out a little bit too broad on your, where you originally had your sketch, if you came out of the line, you'll be fine once you start doing your detailing at the end. You'll notice that the black really does help out with getting those nice, sharp, crisp lines. Sorry, that was my laptop. And there it goes again. And now I like to stay inside of, I, mean, I don't really know what it's called, but the border part of the shoe. I don't like to paint that part, but if you want to, it's totally up to you. I just kind of like how it gives it that nice black kind of border around my shoe. You'll see me adjusting my camera here and there. And now you'll notice that I stop at the toes and the reason is why the brush that I have is meant to cover a larger area. And so once I get a little bit lower, you'll see me switch my brush into a smaller, more brush. Just a good tip for you guys. That's why I said you would need a variety pack. And now you wanna make sure you clean your brushes in between paint jobs. This prevents your brushes from getting tacky and stiff. See in here, I'm moving on to the smaller brush in which we're gonna start working on the toes. Again, adjusting my camera for you guys. I'm trying to give you guys the best view. Now this is where you start seeing your shoes come to life. So instead of just painting the whole toe, I decided to do like a little area where I know my toenail's gonna go. It also kind of excites you a little bit because you start seeing the shoe come alive. And now there is some areas where you'll see that it's not all the way um, opaque with the green. But you know what you guys, I kind of like it that way. I feel like it makes it look a little bit more rough and rugged. I had did a pair of shoes my first time of the zombies, the zombie, the zombie shoes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I just felt like when they were all the way painted, it just, it just looked a little fake to me. I feel this way looks a little bit worn. 
Okay, so now we're moving on to the bones and my selection of brush is a little bit more of a detailing brush. And as you can see on this shoe, there's a speck of green right there that when I had it turned around, I accidentally started painting it and I caught myself. But it's okay, like I said, if you guys mess up because the acrylic paint will cover it up nicely. And now I do like to leave like a little gap of where my bones meet together. If you happen to paint right through it, that's totally fine. You guys can always go back with your black once you start doing your detailing. And as you can see, I already had one. Oh no, you know what? That's actually my husband's parachute right there. Never mind. Same thing with the white. I feel like if I leave certain areas a little bit more transparent, it gives it this really awesome bone look. So if you guys find out like, hey, I need a little bit more paint there, you might just wanna leave it. You might like it that way. If you don't, you can always go back and add more of the, of the white paint. But I'm telling you, when you see it with those little areas where it looks a little translucent, you'll be like, this looks awesome. And you guys, this was late at night, so I was so tired. All I kept thinking about is, oh my gosh, my bed probably feels amazing right about now. I still gotta wash myself, but I had to get this done for you guys. Okay, so moving on to the toenails. I picked like a beige kind of color. Gives it that more like um, thick, toenail kind of look and I picked a little bit more of an angled smaller brush for this and now you guys can get creative with your zombie shoes um, you can do a, like a nail polish color if you choose you want to do that that's totally fine I've done it before where I did my daughter's and it was like a pink nail polish. I even put designs on them and I think I did some that had like a French manicure, which was hilarious because you see these grotesque feet and it has a French manicure and it's just like, what? So, you know, your imagination can run wild with these. And now here, um, like I said, if you mess up, you're fine because you could always go back and retouch up. Here I'm using the green because I felt like my toenails on some of, some of them were a little bit out of proportion and I just wanted to get a crisper line. So right here, as you can see, I'm just adding on the green. And now I decided to do like a yellow tint on top this gives it more of like a fungus kind of toenail. If you don't want to, if you like the beige, you can leave that, that on there, that's fine. And then I move on to, it's like a brown color and I diluted it a little bit with water and I just kind of ran it with my brush and it gives it more of that fungus kind of look. Now let's get into our cockroach. I did a lighter brown for the base of it because they tend to be different colors and I, I kind of noticed that if you use more than one color, the dimensions of it, it looks more realistic. Oh, 
So here we're moving on to our bunions. Now, if you wear heels, you got some bunions. <laughs> Let's just keep it real. You got some bunions if you wear heels. Now I use like a, it's like a burgundy kind of color. And then you just kind of fill it in in the areas where you get the little bumps. Now the fun part. This is where your artwork comes to life. Okay, so this is where we start getting into the fun part. This is where we're going to start doing our detailing. Now you want to get a detailing brush that's going to hold enough paint. Sometimes when they're really long and skinny, it's really hard to work with them. So you want to make sure it's like a little bit short. And now if you feel like you want your toes or any part of it to look a little different, the black will be your best friend. You're able to do more of a contouring on your toe with them. Um, if you get a shiny black, it'll be a little bit harder to, it'll be a little bit harder to, um, make it blend into the shoes. So it's best if you pick a paint, a black paint that's a little bit more on the matte side. I like to do those little um, creases, like how you have on your toes. It gives it a little bit more of a natural look. I'm so sorry you guys, that is my laptop. There's all kinds of little stuff popping up. My battery was dying. My laptop's being disrespectful. <laughs> this is seriously the most fun, the most fun part of this project when I'm doing stuff like this and I know I get into the detailing my heart stout starts pounding because I know that it's coming to life more and more and also you're almost at the end of your project I wanted to give it more of that Frankenstein look. So doing some little stitches here and there, that looks really fun. Some cracks. If you don't wanna do the cracks, that's up to you, it's totally fine. But it just gives it a little bit more to the shoe. And while you're doing this, feel free to add whatever you feel will look good on the shoe. So now we're gonna be doing a darker brown on the cockroach. I don't know if you can see it on my monitor, but we're doing the wings right now. Music keeps me 
and you can use that same darker brown for doing the legs and the antennas. And I'm sorry you guys, I'm trying to hold it at angles where you guys can see it best, but as I'm drying, I'm so used to having my projects up close and personal that I forget. Okay, so now we're doing the blood. <laughs> what's a zombie without a blood, right? Or what's a zombie without blood? And here we go. And now last, you want to get some of that burgundy color that you had used on the bunions diluted with some water make sure you test it a little bit on your napkin and then you just start doing a little bit of shading which gives it more of that decaying kind of look and this is the finished product you guys look how amazing they look i hope you guys enjoyed my video Please feel free to leave any comments down below of what you thought about my DIY zombie shoes. And also if you have any suggestions of maybe something that you think would be pretty awesome to put on the shoes, then let me know, especially if it's for Halloween. I am like obsessed over Halloween. Like I had to think about that. All I was thinking about was Jack Skeleton and all that stuff. But back to the video. Thank you, you guys, and I really do hope you love these as much as I do, as much as my family and friends do, and just keep an eye out for the 30th. Don't forget about that, and I will see you guys on my next video. Mwah.